it. Hello. Welcome to our first science workshop. Now, science at your age is all about finding out and doing things for yourselves. It's not difficult. It begins with looking at things very carefully. Now, today we're going to be looking at fruits and vegetables. And our book, which is called Science Workshop, will help you work like real scientists. It tells you how to look at fruits and vegetables very closely and to make an accurate drawing of what you see. I'm looking after the vegetables, potatoes, onions, artichokes, beans and peas in the pot, like we used to have before frozen peas took over. And I'm looking after the fruit side of the barrow, apples in particular. In this country, we grow some of the best apples in the world. Cooking apples for pies and tarts and eating apples. A few months ago in the spring, I paid my first visit to an apple orchard in East Morling. At this time of the year, all the trees are covered with blossom, and the scientists here can tell just by the amount of blossom what sort of crop they'll get in a few months' time. And this year, it looks like a good one. Although there are no apples on the tree, we can see where they'll come from. At the end of each small branch called a spur, there's a group of flowers. This one has seven. Three open flowers and one, two, three, four buds. But only two or three of these will normally fully develop into a fruit. Each flower has five petals. If you look at a bud, you can see that there are five small green sepals below the petals. The sepals protect the blossom buds from the frost before they open. When the petals fall off, the sepals and what are left of the flower die back and the bump below them grows into the apple. We can see this happening in some special speeded up film. It shows in a few seconds what really takes five months. months that's what will be happening in all the trees here if the weather is good and there's no late frost they should get about 15 kilos of apples from each tree like they did last year now let's see what good observers you are how good you are at looking at things carefully now Lillian yes David can you tell what these are just from the shape well it's difficult to say I can only guess that they're both apples. Hmm. Well, you need more information. Let's put more light on them. Both have red and yellow shiny skins. Both have stalks and they both look like apples. But knowing you... Well, can you turn them over? Yes. Oh, that's an apple because it clearly shows the remains of the flower. Good, that's right. What's the other one? That's a nectarine. It's only when you have enough information that you can be sure what things are. But a scientist looking at an apple wouldn't just be content to look at the outside. He wouldn't just rely on his eyes. This lens magnifies things three times. A lens is a very useful thing. And you should learn how to use one properly. Not like this, right? This way is awkward. You get in your own light. So bring the lens up to your eye and bring the object, the apple, whatever it is, up to the lens. 
until it's sharply in focus. That's better. Yeah, there are lots of things that you can see in an apple. And of course, there are many ways that you can cut it. I started to make a drawing of my apple. So far I've made a faint outline, well, sort of map really. And now I'm just checking to see that it's correct. The reason I'm doing it faintly is that if I make a mistake it's easier to correct it. It's important to get it as accurate as possible. And when I've checked that it is right, I'll go over it more heavily. Who's this? Oh, that's my pal, Tommy Tomato. Now, he's got a bit of a problem because he says he's on the wrong side of the barrow. Oh, does he? Yeah, he says he's a fruit. Now, according to this botanist he knows, or uh, botanist is a... A botanist is a scientist who studies plants. Now, he says that a fruit has seeds and grows from a flower. Well, he certainly grew from a flower and, uh... Has seeds, eh? Well, there's one way to find out. Don't worry, Tommy. It's one of your second cousins, twice removed. He's right. He is a fruit. So, if a botanist... That's a scientist who studies plants. ...would say that a tomato is a fruit, or well, maybe there are other vegetables that are also fruits. Well, I've been checking up on peas. This is a special film to show you how a pea plant grows from a seed. First, the seed swells with water, then the young root bursts the coat and grows down into the soil. Now the young shoot gently unfurls to push its way up to the light. two months the flowers appear two on each branch and all being well each flower will produce a full pod as this remarkable speeded up film shows and we've already seen the seeds the peas so the peas and the pea pod are a fruit not a vegetable. Now, the problem is, vegetable isn't a scientist's word. It's a cook's or a gardener's word. We usually call things vegetables when we cook them and eat them with the main course of a meal. And they don't taste fruity. But there's still fruits to a botanist, and we've rearranged our barrow so that all the fruit so that all the fruits are on my side of the barrow. And that leaves me with these. Recently I visited Montpelier Middle School in Ealing, where they were working with fruits and vegetables. The teacher cut up a cucumber, which is a good one to use because everyone can have a slice. The children looked closely at their own slices, also used magnifiers so that they could be sure to get all the information they needed to make an accurate drawing. They did their drawing faintly at first, in case they made a mistake. Hello. Oh, you seem to be getting on very fast. What can you see in the middle of the slice? Jelly. Yeah, in the middle it's all soft. It's like frog spawn. Mm -hmm. We've got the eggs in the yeah. middle. Can you describe what it's like? We've got the, this kind of star in the middle, at the top, one place, you've got some seeds. You all got seeds? Yeah, they're wrapped. 
two right. millimetres long. They might yeah. not have grown quick enough to see, but they are. Yeah. What, what does your particular piece of cucumber tell you about the rest of it? The whole cucumber? Um, I think it's formed of lots of different layers. Yeah. And some of the layers are very slightly thicker in parts. And so you get a, um, some kind of dots on the outside bit. Well, have a look at the, the one next door to you. See, they've all got that. Yes. Yes, they all have. Clearly, yeah, right. Now, how do we find out if they go right through the cucumber? If you cut uh, one end off and then you had the whole cucumber, and then you cut the other end off and you could see if it went through it. Well, that was one idea, to look at both ends of the cucumber. But I got another idea from another group. Um, well, if you look closely, um, you can see sort of bumps around the side. And in the middle, there's sort of a triangle of shaped seafood thing. <coughs> and two pits, I think, there. Can you think of another name for pits, Richard? Seeds, are they? What about, what about these bumps that Simon found? Hmm? You call them bumps. Did you find any bumps, Jerish? Well, they're sort of little round dots kind of things. Do you think they go right through the cucumber? Yeah, I yeah. think so. How, how, how can you find out? How could you find out? Well, if we peel the skin off the cucumber, we would see the green lines going down. Yes, good. Try that. Use a potato peeler. Are they there? Yes. All right, well, pass it around the table so everyone can have a look. Once they'd finished looking carefully and checked that their drawings were correct, the last thing to do was to go over them more boldly. And remember, when you look closely at fruits and vegetables, talk about what you find with your friends and with your teacher. It'll help you sort things out. Now, if you want more information than you can get out of the science workshop book, and of course there are other books that you can refer to, and we've fed the library catalogue into the computer, Let's see what it can tell us. Are you looking for fiction? Uh, no. Non-fiction? Yes. What are you interested in? Vegetables. A, B, O, E, S. Vegetables. Library catalogue number 635. That's the Dewey catalogue number that you'll find in the library. Do you want any other books? Yes. What are you interested in? Fruit. Library catalogue, fruit, 634. So if you go along to your local library and ask to see all the books that are catalogued under numbers 634 and 635, and you'll find out all the books that deal with fruit and vegetables. Cheerio. You want any other books? No. End of search.